We have examined three approaches to calculating trigonometric functions, the unit circle, right triangles, and using general points on the plane. There is one other method that we need to address, which is the algebraic approach. In order to do this, we need to remember our reciprocal identities, the quotient identity, and the Pythagorean identities. We also need to remember the signs of the functions based on the quadrant that the angle is in. Everything from here is a matter of logic and algebra. Example, suppose theta is in the third quadrant and that cosine of theta is negative one third. Determine the values of the other trigonometric functions using algebraic methods. Knowing that the angle is in the third quadrant, we already know the signs of all the functions. Only tangent and cotangent will be positive. We now need to use our algebraic methods to get their values. First, we need to think about our formulas. We have to identify the values we know and find formulas that can give us information about the other functions. For example, knowing that secant is the reciprocal of cosine means that we know that secant theta is negative three. The Pythagorean identity relates the sine and cosine functions together. By plugging in the value for cosine theta and solving for sine theta, we see that it must either be two square root of two over three or negative two square root of two over three. But since we know that we're in the third quadrant, we know that the sine is going to be negative. From here, we can also get cosecant theta by taking the reciprocal of sine theta, and then we can get tangent theta by taking the ratio of sine theta over cosine theta, and lastly get cotangent theta by taking the reciprocal of tangent theta. There are times when we aren't going to be given the specific quadrant that the angle is in. This will require us to employ some higher level reasoning skills. For example, if we know that sine theta is negative, but tangent theta is positive, what quadrant must the angle be located in? Knowing that sine theta is negative, we know that the angle must either be in quadrant three or quadrant four. And knowing that tangent theta is positive, we know that the angle must either be in quadrant one or quadrant three. Therefore, we can conclude that the angle must be in quadrant three. As you can see, there's more to this than just memorizing formulas. You must also understand the relationships between the various pieces of information. We will run into these ideas again in the future, so it is best to come to a solid understanding of them as soon as possible.